What is up everybody, Neil here, welcome back to the channel. I have been using GPT 5.2 codecs since it has come out and this model is absolutely insane. The best software engineering AI agent by far I've ever used. This is like the AGI moment for me, I will say. And uh, I'll show you some settings that I use within codecs to make it way better. Whenever I first started using the model, it was good, but now OpenAI has made some updates to Codex that makes it a whole lot better, and I'll show you how I set it up in a second here. So what I want to first show you is this uh, this uh, this graph here, this chart from Arc AGI. This is Arc AGI two, the public eval, and what you're seeing here, this circle at the top, is GPT 5.2 set to extra high reasoning with a harness that was designed by this company, Poetic. This is huge. I don't think people really understand what this means. <laughs> so if you're not aware, Arc AGI is a company uh, made by like really, really highly respected researchers within the, the community. Um, Francois Collet, Greg Carmack, some other, I might be pronouncing Greg's name wrong. Sorry, Greg. But um, Francois Collet is the most notable one. And what they have done is they have effectively tried to design this benchmark to explicitly be hard for LLMs. They did not expect LLMs to make progress on Arc AGI 2 much, if at all. <laughs> that was the goal. That was what Francois Collet initially stated. Now, here we are. We have GPT 5.2 set to extra high reasoning with just a little bit of a different harness getting 15% higher than the human baseline. That's huge, especially since this is designed for it to be hard for AI systems. AI systems aren't supposed to be able to do this. <laughs> That's amazing. Next, this is where we are right now. This is the process of vibe coding. Now, there's people that I'll see in my comments that, uh, that say, oh my God, AI is not even good at coding. I don't understand why you keep saying AI is good at coding. It's not going to solve software engineering. These things suck. I This is how I imagine those people actually code, to be honest. <laughs> this is how people actually code these days, is you basically set the initial conditions properly, or maybe they don't know how to do like set the initial conditions properly. Maybe they do have a hard time doing it. But if that's you, I'll show you how to fix that in this video. Basically, all you have to do is set the initial conditions properly and you just kind of make sure it stays on the rails. That's really like what software engineering is already becoming. And if you say it's not that, you just don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to do it. Um, and it's really just that simple. You set the initial conditions properly and you just keep it on the rails and you just keep going with it. And it's that simple. Now, the cool thing is the settings that I'm gonna show you in this video makes it so that it's more autonomous. There's less user input and uh, it makes it so it's less of a pain in the ass to kind of like keep nudging these models forward. And that was one of the things that people really complained about with GPT 5.2 in the coding environment at first is you have to like nudge it a lot to get to do things. GPT 5.2 codex, you don't have to do that at all. This is better than 4.5 Opus by far, in my opinion. Um, I've been using both models in parallel Right here, I have Cloud Code. Right here, I have uh, Gemini, or excuse me, GPT 5.2 Codex. And then this is one project. On a separate project, I have Cloud Code, and then I have GPT 5.2 Codex. So I've been testing both of these models in parallel on two separate products and really seeing where I can use them in my workflow. And what I've noticed is with Codex is a fantastic engineer. This is one of the first models that can actually tear things down to the constituent parts, look at the whole system and actually make reasonable decisions. Not, it's not an absolute monkey. Claude Code is still somewhat of a monkey. It still makes mistakes, but I will say it's much better at uh, more of like a human intuition type of thing. It's better at like natural language. It's better at uh, designing user interfaces and those sorts of things. But if you want the horsepower, you use Codex. If you want the designer, you use Gemini 3 Pro or Cloud Code, right? But I like the horsepower because I like to eat a lot of complexity for my users. I want the discrepancy between inputs and outputs for my users to be as big as possible. I want to eat 
all of the sac I want to eat all of the pain and suffering for my users to give them the best product possible that makes their lives better, right? So that's that's why I like to use Codex because it's good at doing those types of things. So the settings that you should put this on is if you put slash and come down to approvals, slash approvals, set it to agent full access. You probably already have that set up if you vibe code a lot. If you don't, I recommend it. Use your discretion advice. You get the point. Um, slash approvals, now slash experimental. And make sure you have background terminal set to on. And now you can start vibe coding, right? But honestly, before you start vibe coding, you need to have a fantastic system prompt. If you look at my system prompts, they are huge. Maybe not too huge. Like, I don't like waste context. That's one thing that you can do with a system prompt is if this was like a thousand, fifteen hundred tokens or fifteen hundred lines. This is definitely more than fifteen hundred tokens. <laughs> if this was like fifteen hundred lines, um, this would start to eat a lot of the context window of the model. And you don't want that. You want the model to be able to look at this, reference it, and use it as a map for where it's at in the code base. That's what you want to do with your system prompt. If you make your system prompts correctly, your model never gets lost. It never gets tunnel visioned. It always knows ex exactly where it's at and what's next. It always knows how everything relates with each other. It knows all of these different things because it can just reference the map. That's why you create this. You, what you want to do is you want to create the best map possible. And that's how you automate the entire process of vibe coding, really, is you build the best map possible. Now, I'm going to show you the way I do this. So for this product, for example, I don't know if I've showed you guys this yet, but here is a product. I'm just going to keep it pretty vague. Um, this is a product that I literally, I, this came to my vision last night or two nights ago, 48 hours ago, roughly. And this is a, a the problem, the market that I'm uh, working in and the problem that I'm trying to solve has been something that I've been thinking about for years many, many years. This product is something that I thought about 48 hours ago. With GPT 5.2 Codex, I went from an idea less than 48 hours ago to a working prototype that actually is pretty good. And I'm like, holy shit, this is actually going to work. Um, within less than 48 hours, and a lot of that time I was at the gym, I was doing other things, and I still was able to go from idea to that that quick that is fucking insane <laughs> i don't think people understand the again we're going from idea to execution is collapsing in real time and it's really about the ideas here's another product that i've been working on codex is killing it at this really making it a lot better it's basically a simple 3d modeling product right making it really really good so how do you how do you construct the best system prompt? That's what I, we really want to talk about. And it really just comes down to honing in the vision and the user experience. If you have a market that you're already if you already have a market that you're working in and you already have the problem solved or not solved. If you're I'm I'm so tired, guys. It's like eight, it's like 9 p.m. here. This is like my bedtime, sorry. But <laughs> if you have your market identified and you know what problem you're trying to solve. It's all about the user experience now. The first principles of the thing that you're trying to build up from is the user experience and you wanna figure out what technology to use after that. So if you understand the vision of the product, you understand the user experience that you want to have, if you understand what problem you're trying to solve in the market, that's all you need. Now, once you have that vision, what you should do is what you're trying to do is optimize, again, the discrepancy between the inputs and the outputs of the system. You want the user to have the least amount of effort and sacrifice and the greatest amount of reward from your product. That's what makes a valuable product. If they get more out than they put in, it's really good, right? <laughs> um, and they'll continue to use it because it improves their life. So if you can do that, all that really comes down to is the user experience and the interface and the complexity that you're eating on the back end. And that's it. There's three different types of modes. There's complexity modes, there's cost modes, and there's time modes. The cost modes in the world of software are going away 
If you look at these AI agents, quite cheap and they're quite capable. Next year, they're gonna be much more capable and probably around the same price. The complexity is being eaten by them more and more and more. But the interesting thing is the time notes are not, or they kind of are in a way, but you can still spend as a developer more time than the guy next to you building things that eat more complexity than the guy next to you. So it's about how much complexity can you eat per function of time, right? And then on top of that, there's another time mode that is literally impossible to replace, which is the time mode of psychology and branding. If you look at Amazon, for example, Amazon does fantastic on the complexity modes. They have full stack software, hardware, robots, everything. You go to the website, click on the product, click one button, shows up at your door in one to two days. Insane. Um, massive complexity being eaten for the user. They also have massive costs being eaten for the user. They also have massive time to build something like this. They also have massive time being invested into the brand reputation that it makes Amazon Amazon. That is one of the biggest ones that most people don't understand. <laughs> you may have heard the story of when uh, Amazon was back in the early days and they were not profitable for such a long time. Again, emphasis on time because that's the last moat. They were not profitable for such a long time because they're reinvesting that money and time into eating more complexity for the user. And that's why their business is so good. That's why their company is the most one of the most valuable ones on earth, right? So one of the good quotes Jeff Bezos has is in the short term, the market is a betting machine. In the long term, the market is a weighing machine. And what you're trying to do is build the heaviest company. Jeff is really good at this. If you look at Amazon, it is fucking heavy, right? That's what you're trying to do. So if you have the market, you have the problem, now you need to build something heavy, which means you're investing time into eating more complexity than everybody else and time into building the brand. And that's about all you can have in software. It's hard to have cost modes in software now. You need to get into hardware, the world of atoms, if you wanna start having uh, cost modes, right? So this is how you should be thinking about the things that you're building. Um, from there, it's all about maximizing the minimal user input, right? You wanna have the irreducible, simple interface. Why does ChatGPT work so well? Because it's one thing, a text box, right? Just a text box, that's it. You don't need to look at anything. You don't need to tinker with anything. Just a tech, just super irreducible interface, reduces the cognitive load for the user, maximizes the output on the end. Best product on earth, right? Now the user experience will get even better as the model improves because it'll start to eat more and more and more complexity on the back end. And you put in very user, very, very little inputs and you get a massive output, massive output. That's all it is. That's really all it is. And now with the model such as GPT 5.2, this model is one of the first models that actually, excuse me, actually, actually enables builders to build these types of complex systems because of the long context coherence. If you look at the long context coherence of GPT 5.2, it's actually insane. There is no other model like this one out there today. The long context coherence is a thousand times better than any other model, which is why whenever you talk to it in the ChatGPT interface, you get responses that bring up things that you talked about three months ago and you completely forgot about. It brought it up at the perfect time and recombined it to make an actual cool uh, insight or thought, right? So once as you understand these things, which that was a lot of words, so hopefully you didn't click off the video. <laughs> Most people... Most people will go scroll on TikTok by this point. If you didn't do that and you actually understand these concepts, um, you're gonna do, you're gonna do better than most people. I'll say that. After you get all of these things na nailed into your brain and you understand what the project or what the problem is you're trying to solve and what the product's supposed to look like and how it's supposed to feel, then you can go to figure out the tech stack. You ideate with ChatGPT and you solidify the idea. Basically. If you look at this long ass conversation that I've had with ChatGPT, literally all it was is just me talking to ChatGPT back and forth, getting the idea solidified. 
and um, getting the vision extremely clear and then figuring out, okay, what are the limits of the current technology that have been done that I can use, recom- uh, re- recombine to make this actually happen? And then you, uh, you uh, go to deep research, have it research the limits of uh, technology that people have already done and just recombine those innovations. And that's really all it takes to get your first valuable product onto the market these days. And then from there, once you have this very long conversation where everything is super crystal clear and you've gone through all of the different things, you've left no stone unturned, then you output the system prompt, which is right here. You have ChatGPT make you the system prompt. And if you want, you can put it into cloud code and put it into uh, Gemini and have them critique it and say, here's something I would change. And then put that back in the chat GPT and chat GPT will say, "Uh, yes, this is good. Yes, this is good. Or no, that's bad. We shouldn't do that. And then it'll output uh, the final form of the system prompt. You put it in the cloud, you put it in the agents MD and that's it. Then you set the settings up as I, as I showed you and you're off to the races. And now you're this guy. This Once as you understand all these things, you're just this guy. You don't need to do anything else, really. Like, you don't need to sit here and babysit it. Like, sure, well, you put it on the rails if it falls off. Yeah, big whoop. Keep it on the rails. Watch it. It'll do its thing. It's going to do really good. And you're just going to keep it on the rails. And you're going to feel like a complete gangster while this thing build your entire software for you. And you're just kind of like putting your own taste and design into the user interface, making sure it stays on the rails, putting in some input where you think you need to put an input. But for the most part, it's just kind of going to be a process of iteration from here. Once as you get the main scaffolding right, once as you get the main architecture right, it's just kind of like just doing some fine tuning. And it really just comes down to telling it what you want that part of the experience to feel like and going back and forth, back and forth, iterating, fine tuning until you have exactly what you want. And it's really just that simple now. Um, Yeah, that's where we are. It's kind of crazy, but that being said, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Hopefully this was insightful or valuable. I've seen people say, Neil, I want you to actually go through like the process of using Codex and show me how you do the vibe coding process. And I just don't think it's valuable. I I don't think that's worth your time. I don't think it's worth your time because it takes like five minutes to figure it out, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, But really, if you like understand how to learn and you understand how to think and you understand how to use ChatGPT, you should understand how to use this within like 15 minutes or so. Maybe that's wrong, maybe 48 hours. But with these tools, it takes 48 hours to learn any skill, is my bet. Not any skill. Obviously, you're not going to like do nuclear physics in 48 hours, <laughs> but uh, to do this, it's going to take 48 hours and that's about it. <laughs> um, that being said, I will, I will see you in the next video.